For the last 15 or 20 years, commodities expert and legendary investor Jim Rogers has been saying that farmers will end up driving Lamborghinis. I respectfully disagree. I'm going to show the article screenshots of a dozen or so different articles. If you want to go into depth, there is a lot of depressing details about the unbelievable damage to global trade, to the food supply chain because of travel restrictions, because workers cannot cross borders for temporary workers for fields, and how governments now either have already started in the case of countries like India, Kazakhstan, Serbia, Vietnam, with a few of their crops, and Russia's considering it, along with others are looking into it on a week-by-week -week basis. We have governments that are hoarding crops now and the potential for also wage and price controls. So I'm getting a lot of emails and Patreon account messages from my patrons asking about ways to play agriculture. And unfortunately, a lot of agriculture businesses are not doing well now. There's going to be an enormous amount of bankruptcies. There was already bankruptcies over the last year or so. Ask the dairy farmers in Wisconsin and other parts of the U.S., Ask Dean Foods and Borden, the two largest milk producers in the U.S., how well agriculture was doing because the government here in the U.S. set price controls for milk that the farmers cannot pass on their cost increases to the consumer. Also, people are not drinking as much milk, but my point is there's heavy government intervention in this, and now governments look to be intervening even more. You have situations now where some governments in China during the Wuhan lockdown, where they even were subsidizing some food. China has had problems with this for over a year now with the African swine flu, where they've either subsidized some food items or offered discounted pork from their strategic pork reserve. So the bottom line here is that there's a lot of problems, whether it's locusts in Eastern Africa killing crops or many other different problems with labor, with travel, with being able to move goods through air transport or container ships to the grocery store and other parts of the supply chain. And that's why we have situations now where farmers are unfortunately, some of the crops they have, because the restaurants are not open, the shelves are not being, the supply chains for some of these grocery stores and other stores that do sell groceries, the supply chain management for some of these stores is absolute, companies is absolutely horrible. And you have situations now where a lot of farmers here in the United States, some of their crops for fruits and vegetables, they're dying on the ground. So that was a recent report that the schools for school lunches, the restaurants that normally buy fresh produce at least a couple times a week, that the farmers are not able to deliver those. So you have all types of distortions either through the coronavirus or through even more government intervention. And unfortunately, I do not think there will be a good investment play here. Now, there might be a, a temporary pop, but these businesses are extremely capital intensive. There is a lot of rules and regulations for farming in most countries. You cannot just be an entrepreneur and start up a farm. Normally, you have to deal with a lot of rules and regulations at the local, state, and federal level in order to, to start a farming business. So... Unfortunately, I think we're going to start to see countries hoard even more. That's what it looks like unless the problems with the coronavirus suddenly herd immunity is developed quickly or there's a vaccine that gets the global supply chain back in order within the next month or two. But only wanted to show a dozen different articles here in this short little video. And I will put links below the video in the information and description section if you want to research this more. But businesses like the potash companies, again, capital intensive, farmers often delay buying potash. So potash companies are not going to do that well. The tractor companies like John Deere and Caterpillar are going to struggle with this as well. Farmers are just not going to have the free cash flow and the discretionary income, especially if there's price controls where the governments might force stockpiles for for um, their own citizens and the farmers might not make much of any of a profit so that could happen and there were already enormous amounts of bankruptcies of farmers here in the united states i've been covering farmageddon now for at least the last 12 to 18 months and then the other farming businesses like actual farming is extremely capital intensive and if you look at some of these etfs the farming etfs like moo m-o-o or some of the publicly traded farming companies, the revenues and the profit margins have been horrible. The only farming stock that I know that did well for a while 
was the JBA meets one because they got a bunch of contracts from China. They're a Brazilian meat company and they got a bunch of contracts from China because of all the tariffs that the Chinese government retaliated against the US government and put against soybeans and pork. So that might be an interesting play as a trade. I haven't looked at the company in at least a couple months, but maybe China will be buying more soybeans and more pork from Brazil, considering the trade relationship those have. But in general, I think the picture is clear. We're starting to see a lot of governments look at potentially stockpiling, hoarding, similar to what some people are doing at the grocery store now, along with more export bans on more crops.